All right, so this is our sixth soul winning workshop. And I'm gonna be hitting two brief subjects today. It shouldn't take very long. One of the main subject is gonna be on how to preach the gospel to your relatives. And honestly, you know, the gospel obviously doesn't change. It's not different for people. You know, I, when we, we've done um, soul winning workshops where we've talked about Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, and there's certain things that they believe that we, you know, the gospel is still the same, but there's certain things you want to make sure you cover. But when it comes to relatives, I mean, it's, the, it's just the same as talking to some random person at the door that's unsaved. And, when, and actually, you have to keep that in mind because we have a tendency to treat our relatives different, and for good reason. I mean, you're comfortable with them, they're your family, you know, you're, you're used to, to communicating a certain way. But when you have somebody, a loved one especially, that, that you want to preach the gospel to, one of the things that, that people will unfortunately do is they'll, they'll wait for what they consider to be the best time to give somebody the gospel and just say, well, all the stars have to line up basically and maybe they'll ask me about church. Instead of treating their family as anyone else that you normally would when you go out door to door. And honestly, if you want your family members to get saved, you have to take it upon yourself to bring up the subject. You can't just wait for that, that golden opportunity where they're going to ask you and everything's going to be just right because you nobody knows what's going to happen on tomorrow. Nobody does. We don't know what our life's going to bring. You know, there's all these times, oh yeah, well, we'll just talk about it some other time. We'll talk about it later. You have to make a concerted effort. The same way you do when you go out door to door soul winning. You have to make an effort to show up at the soul winning time. You have to make the effort to go there, to go out, to preach the gospel. You need to be able to make at least the same effort with your family members. The good, the advantage and the benefit that you have of your family members is you actually know them so you could make plans where you can make it so that it's just you and your family, you know, your, your, your relative. Where you can say, hey, let's go out to eat. Why don't you come over? Why, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's your family. You should be able to make a time where you can meet up with them, right? And, and, and try to set the scene so that there's not tons of distractions and there's not, you know, a whole bunch of people around. Now, maybe you have some extended family you don't talk to very much and the only time you're going to see them is a party or something like that. <laughs> Well, still, if, if, you know, if you want that person to get saved, you're going to have to try to make things work. So if that means kind of separating yourself a little bit, try to you know, start a conversation, and, um, don't, but just don't wait for the opportunity just to come up. That's one of the biggest things because that's, that's unfortunate. That's what a lot of people do, especially if you go out door-to-door -door soul It's like you're good about that. You're good about going out soul but then it's like you never preach the gospel to your friends and family. Another thing that people are concerned about is, well, how are they going to receive it? And they think that, well, they're just going to hate it, and then we're going to have this problem. And, and some people are worried about having a, you know, a bad relationship because you're bringing up the gospel. But my answer to that is, you know, do you really love your family member then? If you're more worried about them getting upset and you having a, a stressed relationship over the gospel of Jesus Christ... Can you even honestly say that you love that person? Because if, they, if they're not, if you know they're not saved and you're not going to give them the gospel just because you're worried about how the, fam, you know, the, the family relationship might turn, you don't love that person. Because that person go, you know, dying and going to hell is what will happen. And you, for all you know, you may be the only person, you may be the minister by which they believe. You don't know if, if anyone else in their life or if any soul winner is ever going to knock on their door. You have to take that responsibility upon yourself. And look, if, if someone is going to, even if it's a relative, if they're going to get that upset about the gospel of Christ, you know, you have to do your job. You have to make sure your hands are clear of that issue and love your family enough to tell them the truth and not just ignore it, not hide the truth. Now, it's also easy when you're talking to a relative. So let's say, okay, you've got the conversation going, you've got it established. Another pitfall is that is these rabbit trails. Oftentimes, you know, I've preached on this before when you're at the door, not letting people steer you off in other directions. But when you're talking to someone you're comfortable with, they have a lot more things they could bring up. They might even bring up something kind of personal and like, 
You, you feel, you have a tendency to feel more like, I want to answer all of their questions. You know, I want to make sure, you know, this is my best friend or this is, you know, my cousin or whatever. And I just, I want, you know, I know a lot about the Bible. I want to make sure I answer every single one of their questions. But what happens with that mindset is you never end up getting through the gospel. We all have limited time to talk to people. I mean, it may be half an hour, maybe an hour, two hours, whatever. But there's going to come a point in time where like, you guys are just going to have to go and, and do different things. You want to make the, the best use of your time and try to keep on track. You know, the gospel, it's not difficult, it's not confusing, but there, there is, you know, there's a few things you, you have to know and you want to try to keep together. I mean, the, the judgment and penalty of sin with the, with the grace of God, you know, try to keep those two concepts as, as close together spatially as possible so you're not just going off on a whole bunch of other topics and then coming all the way back around again to, to Jesus Christ because it's going to make more sense when you're able to present it just, just kind of complete. So try to avoid that rabbit tra those rabbit trails and thinking you have to answer all the questions. Treat it, again, very similar to the way that you would at the door. It's not, I mean, you're still trying to get somebody saved. And I mean, think about it this way. If you think it's better to answer all their questions, then why wouldn't you be doing it at the door? Right? I mean, if they, like, like you shouldn't treat your family, you shouldn't be, treat a person at the door any different than your family. You shouldn't treat your family any different than the person at the door. You should love them all, you know, and, and, and want all of them to get saved. So whatever the best method you think is to, to preach the gospel, that's what you should be doing regardless of if it's family or if it's Joe Schmo at the door. You should, you should be trying your best every time you're preaching the gospel. Now, another difficulty that can come up is how do you bring the gospel back up again? Right? Say, okay, well, I have a family member, I have a brother, I've got a sister, you know, I've talked to them about Jesus and they didn't get saved, you know, they didn't receive it. So how do I bring it up again? Or what's even worse, and, I, and I've had this situation too, where your family member thinks they're saved, but like you know they're not saved. So you might feel awkward saying, hey, if you were to die today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? You know, like, because you already know the answer to that and you've, you've already gone over that, but they still didn't get saved. So how do you bring up the gospel again to people like that? Well, there's multiple, multiple choices, right? And there's no one right answer. So we've got, I've got a bunch of things that I wrote down here of how you can continually be able to bring up the gospel. Right, and especially in ways where, because I know there's some people that they might might just get offended right away at the fact that you say, "Oh, you know, I'm not saying I don't want to talk to you." Say, so, okay. One of the methods that I've used is like, you know, you could do something like, "Hey, I read this verse the other day in the Bible and really stood out to me." It doesn't necessarily have to be about salvation. It's just because what you're doing is you're bringing up the topic of conversation that are things of the Bible, that are things of God, or you know, we were in church last week and X, Y, and Z happened or we're having this event. I'm really excited about it because normally, I mean, you talk to relatives, you're talking about things in your life. You're talking about things that you're doing normally, you know, like, hey, how are you doing? How are the kids doing? How's it, you know, how are these people? How are those people? You're catching up. You're, you're, concerned, you're concerned about their welfare. So in that type of conversation, you just bring up church. You bring up these other things which can help lead you and steer you back into a conversation regarding the gospel. Um, I could remember one instance I had with a family member where um, we were talking about, I don't know, Ray Comfort or someone put out some video about abortion and my relative was saying, oh yeah, this was a great video, you know, it was really cool. Like, and I said, yeah, you know, I saw that there was, you know, the stuff on abortion, he was right on about it. And I said, but, you know, I don't like Ray Comfort because he preaches a false doctrine. And we had the opportunity then to go into the whole repent of your sins thing and just, and just really cover a lot of scripture on that. So, there, you know, there's lots of ways to bring this up. And, and really, you know, I just mentioned not getting involved in these rabbit trails with, with people. In this instance, you can use a rabbit trail to get back into the gospel. So like people that have these other questions and you know, maybe they're interested in something else. Maybe it's end times prophecy. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know someone and they're, you know, they're not, they, you kind of feel like they don't really want to talk about the gospel with you, but they'll talk about other things. Bring up one of those other things. But then everything, every doctrine, I believe everything in the Bible can be brought back around to the gospel. It's, you know, the, there's inherent truths 
in, in biblical doctrines where you ought to be able to, to bring it back to somehow have it relate to our salvation in one way or another, right? Um, and, and finally, you know, another, another method is just to be very direct. I mean, maybe you're having problems, you're trying to bring it up, they're still not getting it. There is nothing wrong with actually, I mean, being very direct is good. And maybe this is the first approach that you use, but just say, hey, you know, I love you and I'm concerned about where your soul is going to go when you die. And I don't think that you're saved. And you know, I'm not trying to offend you. I don't want to be rude, but I, I love you. You're my brother, you're my cousin, whatever, and I don't think that you're saved. And I, and I really just want to talk to you about this because it's really important to me and, and I'm concerned about you. You know, I mean, it's, there's nothing, now that may make you feel uncomfortable, maybe harder to do, but again, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could try to bring it up, but bringing up the gospel is critical. I mean, you know, a person's not going to get saved unless you preach them the gospel. You can't just expect it to happen somehow, you know. So we, we need to be doing whatever it is. I mean, and you know what? There's plenty of other ways to bring up the gospel too. I just mentioned a few ways to do that. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is if it's in the forefront of your mind. You need to be consciously thinking about people. It'll start with prayer. Okay, a lot of us, some of us at least, don't see family members that often. And even if you do, keep those, keep those family members in your prayers for salvation. Be thinking about them and, and think about them in terms of salvation. Think about them of like, hey, God, you know, help me to have the boldness. God, help me to, to, to get these right situations to talk to my family members. God, bring some event into their life so whatever their stumbling block is, you know, they'll, they'll hit it hard. Maybe, the, maybe the, someone's just really proud and they need to be brought down low. God, please, whatever it takes, if they have to lose their business, if they have to lose their house, whatever it is, Lord, bring them down to that point to where they'll be humble so that their pride is no longer a stumbling block for their salvation. And, and keep people in your prayers like that. And when you're thinking about people like that and loving people like that, you're a lot more likely to open up your mouth about the gospel because it's more in the forefront of your mind. Instead of just kind of ignoring it or forgetting about it and getting caught up in whatever you're doing. Maybe it's a birthday party or something. Oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, you know. And then you leave and you're like, oh, I should have given them the gospel. If you're thinking about it more frequently and you're, and you're praying for those people, hopefully that won't happen to you because you'll be thinking, I need to give them the gospel. Even before you head over to the event, hey, who can I give the gospel to today? Turn, if you would, to Ecclesiastes 11. This is the last point that I want to make just in general. And it, and it kind of applies to this, but it also applies outside of family and relatives. And we're going to see in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 a little bit of truth here. Don't withhold the gospel from someone because you think that they're not going to receive it. Don't make the judgment call yourself. Now, again, there's reasons that people don't want to with family. They think it's going to cause family problems. Someone's going to get upset with you or whatever. Look, you don't make that judgment call. There are times that, that people I've talked to that I thought, man, this probably isn't going to go over well at all. And they were overjoyed and, and ecstatic and just loved the conversation and thought it was great. And I thought it was going to be like, you know, I'm kind of like wondering what's going to happen here. There, I mean, and there's times, all the time this happens out soul winning. We'll be walking up to a door. I remember one door I was walking up to. This, this kid was just blaring like this punk rock and just blaring it, right? And we're walking up. And just, just from appearance, you know, the way that he looks, looked like the type of guy would just be like, you know, get out of here and just, and just kind of run you off. Not like that at all. Now, if I would have had that fear and that thought, I could have just skipped that door and gone on to the next one. But, oh, this guy's not going to want to listen to me. I mean, he's blaring this music and he doesn't look like, you know. That guy got saved. Went over there. He's like, oh, yeah, hold on a second. He turned the music down. Listen to the gospel. These are the thoughts that we have, though. We use our own type of wisdom and we use our own judgment sometimes on people when we ought not to be doing that. We need to be able to just preach the gospel like we're told and leave it up to them. And, hey, if it, if it means they're going to be upset about it, then 
well, you're doing something right. I mean, it, blessed are they that, that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, right? I mean, if they're going to be upset about you and they're going to say bad things about you for, for Jesus' sake and the gospel's sake, then so be it. But you're doing what's right. Look at verse 4 of Ecclesiastes 11. The Bible reads, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So he's saying, that, you know, those people who are looking at it like, oh, it's kind of a windy day today. If I try to sow the seed, it's just going to blow away, and it's just it's not the right conditions. And they're looking at the clouds and say, well, look, if you spend all of your time just looking at all these conditions and not actually just doing something, he says, you're not going to reap. You're not going to sow, you're not going to reap, and you are going to do nothing. Verse 5, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. He's saying, look, don't think that you know more than you know. You don't know the way that the bones grow in the womb. Like, you don't know how that happens. There's things, there's spiritual things that God knows that you don't know. So, in verse 6, he says, In the morning sow thy seed. And in the evening, withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Sow the seed. Preach the gospel. You don't know what's going to happen. But I guarantee you, you do know what's going to happen if you don't open up your mouth. If you don't preach the gospel, nothing's going to happen. That's guaranteed. You will not reap. But if you can at least just open up your mouth and preach the gospel, who knows? Don't try to, don't say, oh, the conditions aren't right for me to preach the gospel to this person. You don't know that. You don't know what's going on in their life. Maybe the conditions are just right and you have no idea and you just think that they're not right. The only way you can know is, by, is just by preaching the gospel. And you have to just do it by faith. So don't, don't let any of those things discourage you. Hey, winning, winning your relatives to the Lord is important. It's very important. I mean, who do you love more than like your family? You know, I mean, we go out and preach the gospel to strangers and we rejoice when they get saved and we love them. Don't you love your family more? How hard are you trying to preach the gospel to your family? Is it that important? Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much um, that you've entrusted us with the gospel of Christ, dear Lord, and that you've given us this free gift. God, I pray that you would please embolden us as a group, help us to, to be able to reach our family members, not to make up excuses, dear Lord, but that we would be emboldened to, to preach your word and not to be concerned about how they're going to react to it, Lord, but to truly love them enough to try to warn them of the dangers of hell. And um, if it means we have to do it repetitively, then we have to do it repetitively, dear Lord. But we would be foolish to just ignore the consequences of people who aren't saved and just to try to save a family relationship um, over telling them the truth, dear Lord, and, and, and trying to get that person saved. God, we pray that you please just bless the soul winning efforts that we're going to have this afternoon and that you would please help us to have um, a great harvest to reap. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right. So normally we do a time of like practicing, which we can do if, if anybody wants to. There's not anything I went over today that's like different than giving the gospel. You know, I mean, you could pretend maybe you're talking to a relative, but it really should be pretty close to just giving somebody the gospel. Or if anybody has any questions, then you could ask your questions. But if not, then we'll just get ready to go out soul winning. Are we all good? I have a question. Yeah. How many times would you consider giving somebody the gospel that's a friend or a family before you just... Because sometimes you can feel like you're beating a dead horse, you know? That's why I would... Well, I don't think we should give up. Or I think... Like just keep going, or... I think, I think... That's why I use other methods, like talking about other things to bring it back to the gospel, so that you're not just like... Because some people will just, like, shut down. And be like, you know, you're bringing up the gospel again. You know, they just be like, I'm saved, like drop it and like don't want to talk about it. So when you bring up the other, the other issue, I mean, just other things about the Bible or whatever, it's, you can, you can get into subjects and doctrines about salvation to just continue to, to plant those seeds.
and bring it up again. I mean, it's because I, I know what you mean like being a dead horse and just being real repetitive. But again, like I'll ask you this: I, I, Would you just be comfortable just saying, "Well, they could go to hell"? No. And that that would be the point when I would say stop. Is if you're just comfortable with that person just going to hell, then don't bring it up anymore. And I, obviously, I know you know like yeah. it may sound like a silly question, but that's you know we shouldn't we shouldn't stop. Because um, we don't know how much time we have or they have. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, accidents happen all the time, and we, we live our life under the assumption that everything's just fine. But who knows? I mean, I got a scare when my dad got in a car accident, and he was like, I thought it was going to be the call that, like, he was dead. Yeah. And thankfully, he wasn't. He's still alive today. But, like, that was a big wake up call. It's like, you know what? I'm not doing enough. And sometimes you get those opportunities, sometimes you don't. Those opportunities to say, wait, I need to, to, to yeah. you know, be more focused about this. So I would say one way or another, keep trying to bring it up. You know, obviously if you, you know, like if they're really irritable about it, like if you can bring it up another way, it's better to not, to not have the, the opposition and that, and that and the strife immediately. But sometimes it's worth the strife to just to just get it out there. And be like, look, this is why I'm doing this. You know, I'm you know, I don't think you're you know, whatever. Like, being real blunt. Because yeah. there's both approaches work. Being real blunt or kind of you know, bringing around and, and, and talking about it in other ways. So you you just you kind of have to gauge your relationship with that person. How many times you've gone over it. What you know where you're at. Stuff like that. So, but I, yeah, I would, I would say there's not a good time to stop until they get saved.